What's going on, guys? Kyle here with uh, Sarah Breyer uh, for the Blacklisted Voice, episode 16. We're going to kind of dive into Sarah's um, training past and history with fitness and kind of talk about her goals and where she wants to go from there. So, Sarah, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Sarah Breyer, like Kyle said. I'm currently a CrossFit athlete, but uh, I've played a couple sports in the past. Do you want me to go into, like, what different sports? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. If you want to jump right in and like go into the, yeah. the details or the nitty gritty, sure. like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, initially when I was younger, I started by playing soccer because all my siblings played soccer. So I was like, I want to play soccer. Um, but I really liked doing like goalie because it didn't involve a lot of running. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> right I can stand here and look big. I got that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, I don't remember why, but like we eventually just kind of quit playing soccer and then I started playing basketball um, in high school. And I liked it, but I started to develop really bad um, asthma. So like by the end of high school, like I was really struggling. Um, it was really weird. Like at the end of high school, I got really, really sick. And um, it took down my lung capacity by 80%. So oh, wow. I actually like, it was weird, like being an 18 year old walking across the room, I had to sit down to breathe again. And then I'd like go to the next room, sit down to breathe again. So it was like going, coming from like playing sports, loving everything, like it was really strange. It was really like felt kind of like surreal. Cause you're like, well, you know, a couple years ago I was fine and now I'm like dying, you know? Like yeah, it's a yeah. strange feeling, feel like you can't breathe. Um, and I don't remember, I think I had pneumonia or something like that. And it just kind of oh, like, okay. like snowballed into decreased lung capacity and they're like we don't know if you'll ever get this back and I was like well I'm going to because <laughs> I'm not gonna live <laughs> like this forever um, right so it's really interesting because like freshman year of college I didn't play any sports I, I couldn't breathe like I had a really hard time breathing anyway so mm -hmm. I would take albuterol which is that little gray inhaler if you see that it's pretty common um and I'll take that even when I did like Oh my gosh, the PE class that everybody has to take freshman year of college where I went. And I was like, this is embarrassing. Like taking a puff of this albuterol right before I have to go play volleyball for about two minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think like fitness definitely took a nosedive um, kind of like around freshman year. Cause I was just like, I don't know, like, I don't know what I can do anymore. Um, yeah. And I had been in high school, I went like to Planet Fitness and I would like lift in between, I would go to like school and then lift and then basketball practice. So I was used to training um, my body. So it was kind of weird, but um, we did find out like, um, I'm really allergic to gluten, which sounds like a lot of people say that, but they're actually not, I really am. And when I took it out, like asthma was gone. Completely. Oh, crazy. Like within, I would say 10 months, it took a long time to like clear everything up. But within 10 months, like, I never use, I've not, I haven't used that inhaler in seven years. So yeah. it's pretty cool, like, how, you know, you can track what symptoms, what's going on with the rest of the body. Because I was having gut issues and stuff, too. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just take out the top five allergens, like, peanuts, chocolate, sugar, whatever. Like, took them all out, like, gluten, dairy. And when I added everything back in, I was fine, except for the gluten. That, like, killed me. So um, wow. it was cool in the sense that like, I felt like I kind of got a part of my life back. Um, yeah. Then I got to college at, well, I switched colleges. I kind of screwed around freshman year and then had to switch. So I switched college <laughs> sophomore year. We'll talk about that. Um, switched college at sophomore year and um, I was at orientation and I was already like, I've already done this. I don't want to be at orientation. And it was kind of fate though, like it definitely was because these two girls walk up to me and they're like, hey, you look like a tennis player. And I'm like, that's hilarious. I play basketball, you know, like such attitude. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. I feel like you have to have attitude if you're going to be on the court because you're pushing people around anyway. It just kind of comes with the, uh, the athletic territory. Um, right, right. And I was like kind of debating trying out for the basketball team, but I was like, I don't know, like I haven't played in a year. I'm probably really rusty. Well, these girls were like, you look like a tennis player. We're lacking in tennis players. You want to come to tryouts? And I was like, I've never touched a tennis racket before, but why not? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually went to tryouts, which is the beauty of being at a D3 school. Um, I went to tryouts and the coach was like, all right, you're not bad. Here's a racket. I'm going to bench you for the year. You're just going to play scrimmages and all kinds of things like that. It's 
um, and just learn the skill. You're going to be beat by every single one of your, you know, play um, teammates. You're just going to learn. And it was really cool because that whole year, I felt like it was accelerated learning. Like when you really, really want something and you're willing to show up to practice early, stay as late as the coach will stay and just like continually get beat by teammates that are leap years better than you are. Like it was just that, it was like a really deep grit feeling where you're just like, no, like I'm going to make this team by next year. I'm going to do it. And mm -hmm. it was incredible. Like I trained that whole, you know, year with the team. And then over the summer, I enrolled in um, private instruction and really worked my tail off. And when I came back, I can be kind of through preseason, you will compete against your teammates to see what spot you get. Um, and I rolled in with the lowest spot, but I didn't care. I was like, I got on the team. Like, this is awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. So, like, I competed um, – you know, in regular matches, I got smashed for a lot of them, but I, you know, I won a couple, I think it was like 10 losses and four wins or something. So it was like, wasn't a great score, but I didn't care. Yeah. Um, and when you play in that position, like they hope to win, you know, the top ones, cause that looks better. Um, so the bottom ones is kind of like, eh, whatever. I mean, they all make up to win a match, but anyway, so right, I right. just kept, playing and I ended up moving up spots and and being third doubles um and then six singles so it was okay. really cool by like senior year I was able to say like yes I actually deserve to be on the team you know what I mean like it took a while yeah, I felt like yeah. an imposter for a long time I was like oh my gosh I don't know anything um, <laughs> but like a lot of that I attribute for sure to like my coach like he definitely he would always tell me he'd be like I see so much potential in you, but you're not using it. And he would say that for not just sports, but just like the way I was living my life before was just kind of like, like, I didn't really care. Like I would do the bare minimum on school. I would do the bare minimum on everything. Cause I was just, I don't know, I was a slacker and something just definitely switched. Like he just really, yeah. really pushed me. And then like one year I was like, I'm going to be on Dean's list. And I was like, I can do this. And like, just changed my GPA and just, it was really cool how his influence just changed the overall trajectory of who I was. Like it really, really changed me. So that's yeah. like the fitness journey through college. Cause a lot of people's college athletic experience is very different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like when he was saying stuff, like he saw, he sees more potential in you. Like, was it like, did it help you create new habits or form new habits when you, when he was saying that stuff or like, what was the big um, like change for you to start um, like pushing a little bit harder on the court or in school? Well, he would sometimes like, <laughs> we're both very stubborn people. And um, he would say things like that. And I would get really mad because I'd be like, you don't know how hard I'm working. And then like later I'd be like, okay, actually I'm not like, I'm actually not pushing <laughs> as hard as I should be. So then I would start, yeah. you know, and it was in a little things even, like not getting to practice late. Like initially it was like, cool, like I want to be here. But at the same time, you have this habit of being a slacker and it's hard not to fall back into that habit. Just because you want something doesn't mean you're going to all of a sudden like day and night change into an incredible, hardworking, great work ethic kind of a person. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and it was like those little changes where it was like, I'm going to start, I think it happened really partway through the first season. When I saw what the other girls could do, I was like, I want to do that. I want that too. Yeah. I realized like my lifestyle sucked. My eating sucked. Like it was before I went off gluten and I was just eating crap like all the time. So I was like, I don't know, I'm on a yeah, college yeah. campus and they have a great cafeteria. Like I'm going to eat stuff all the time. Right. And, um, <laughs> and so it kind of like slowly I started realizing like, huh. Maybe if I change my attitude about practice, maybe I'll want to get there a little earlier. Because it is hard when you get beat day after day after day. Like, you just, you suck at something for a really long time. Like, that does yeah. feel like beating if you don't have the right mindset. Um, for sure. A little thing. Like, I would, I started changing my eating habits. And I, all of a sudden, I lost the asthma and I felt healthier. Like, that was huge. Um, right, so I started right, feeling right. like, wait, like, maybe I can do this. Like, maybe it's not as hard as I thought. And then yeah. like started going to the cafeteria and being like, I don't think I'm even eating enough. Cause at the time I weighed like, I want to say 115 pounds and I'm five foot seven. So like, okay. all those little things just started changing. And yeah. 
they add up to the big things. You know, they add up to the putting in extra hours. And then I started uh, sophomore year, or sorry, junior year. I started going to the gym in the morning and then going to practice in the afternoon. So I was working out in the morning for like an hour and a half before classes. Mm -hmm. And then um, either that or right before practice, it depended on schedule. And then practice was like three to four hours. So it was like, started getting in this like groove of just being like, I love moving. I love being fit. I love feeling strong. Like that's yeah, a feeling yeah. that I hadn't felt for a while. Cause with the lung capacity thing, I was just like, Oh, I feel weak. Like I can't do anything. And then you just kind of fall into a slump and it's nobody's fault, but your own really. Um, yeah. So when you started changing those habits, then it was like, Whoa, like it just unleashed this, this feeling of like, it's, it's that hunger and it's that drive to just continue mm -hmm. getting better. And then it was like, yeah breaks are off like <laughs> you know I just yeah I just totally changed after that and and only for the better yeah yeah um so I we're filming this on a Tuesday I'm actually doing a podcast kind of on this tomorrow with somebody else <laughs> but really? oh, that's a, awesome. yeah <laughs> there's a book by um his the author is James Clear and this is kind of like what I'm using as research for this podcast but this is a lot of what he talks about is like one year environment is important so you were like inside of this environment that like cultivated kind of like this drive and this want to get better. Um, you created better habits around what you were doing. Um, and like the mindset shift is huge um, yeah. in regards to like actually going and enjoying practice a little bit more. Um, totally. Do you remember like what your thought process was like prior to um, going like, I guess like sophomore? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like one of the big shifts, at least for me was, um, I had, so freshman year, I come out of an abusive Wasn't relationship here. and, um, I, I had that mindset of just like constant level of fear and just, I didn't want to be noticed. I didn't want to be out there. I didn't want to be seen. And so you kind of just pull in. It's, it's this very mm -hmm. like, it's not recluse, reclusive, but it's protective. Like you just start being like, that's it. Like, I don't know if I can handle life. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just chill over here and nobody's going to bother me and nobody needs to know my crap. Like you just kind of get to that place where you're like, I can't handle any more pain. So I'm gonna just pull back. And yeah. there was definitely, um, like freshman year. That's part of the reason why I had to switch colleges, um, was to get away from, uh, my boyfriend. And, okay, yeah. and I, uh, when I switched, I, I really, I never told anybody what was going on. So um, sophomore year, like nobody really had a clue. And then there was one day where somebody was like, hey, did you know, um, do you know so-and-so? Like he's new on campus. And I was like, what? Like, he's not supposed to be here. Like I literally like hyperventilated, like booked it back to the dorm room, locked the doors and was like, I'm terrified. Like it was such a, and like, that's how you can, like, that was governed by fear. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's a difference between like, oh, that's kind of freaky. And there's like an absolute being terrified. And like, right. it was kind of at that, that crux, that point where you're like, I can either give in to this fear mm -hmm. and like quit the team and decide like, I can't be on the court. Like, I don't know how safe I am, like whatever. Or I can decide to just be who I am and find a level of strength that I've never found before. And it was just like, it was that spirit of overcoming. And yeah, that's, yeah. you can't be in a victim mindset. You can't be, why me? Why is this happening? Because he wasn't going to the school, but he was dating a girl on the campus. And I was just like, you know, and of course, like, you have to put boundaries in place. Like, I unfortunately had to tell, like, my RD. I was like, oh, great. I got to talk about my past, you know? But yeah. you know, it was like, I'm glad you told us, like, anytime you come home late from a game, like, we would get dropped off on campus and then walk back to our dorms, um, could be, like, midnight, it just really depended on when we got back, like, if we had a game in New York, and, um, and I was just, like, I don't know, I don't really like walking back in the dark anymore, and she was, like, well, then just text security, and they'll be right there, and having, like, some of the boundaries set for me, but also having to step out and still be brave in mm. that aspect, just, really was like a really positive snowball effect in the other areas of my life where I was like, well, maybe the reason I'm not living up to my potential is because I'm afraid if I give everything, it still won't be enough. And yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like, 
you know, like mind blown uh, light bulb moment where I just started realizing like, well, then why am I wasting my time? Why am I wasting my coach's time? Why am I wasting my teammates time? Like, then I just was like, I've got to give more. And it took, it was hard because to give Mm -hmm. everything is actually, it's pretty vulnerable because then you don't have that stupid little excuse that some people use. I used to, um, where it was like, well, I didn't actually play the hardest I could have. Right, right. What the heck does that mean, you know? So, yeah. So, you know, it took, a, it strips away that ability to have that excuse. It strips away the mentality of being a victim. And you're just like, this is who I am. And I'm just going to keep hunting after this. And if it's not enough, it's not enough. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, so it yeah. Was a very slow change. <laughs> I wish it could yeah. have been a little quicker, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, mental changes take a significant amount of time to, to yeah. change, you know, it's just like creating a new habit. Like it, you have to recognize the, the habit and then figure out how you want to change the habit. Like it's the same thing yeah. with thought processes as well. Like you have to recognize the thought process and then figure out how you want to change that thought process and then actually start acting on that thought process to make it a habit. So it's, yeah. it takes a significant yeah. amount of time to change your thought patterns, but like, as it happens it's it's exciting and like it's fun because you get to see things like see what you're truly capable of so um have you ever read the book i i probably recommend this to way too many people but uh mindset by carol dweck have you heard of that one i don't think i have no okay that i would uh definitely check that one out um it it's kind of like it talks about like fear of failure and and developing a growth mindset which kind of like sounds like you you kind of stumbled into that a little bit more um yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) but yeah that's uh that's kind of like uh the a lot of successful athletes have that mindset and they start kind of like gravitating towards that mindset whether they're like told about it or or develop it on their own but um yeah that might be something that you can look into Um, i'm always looking for good books i love to read like that's one of the things that i found that it's just i love it it's like it's just like a knowledge drop into your head and you're like ah this is mine forever like i can just keep learning and that's a different kind of a hunger and I, i just love to learn so yeah for sure for sure um, so after, uh, college, uh, did you find CrossFit right away or did, uh, did it take oh. a few years or what were you doing after college? <laughs> so after college, um, since I only played tennis for three years, I was like, I feel robbed. Like I was only in school mm-hmm. basically to play sports at that point. Cause I was so like, I love sports. Like it just like took over my life and I was like, I need something. So I started running half marathons and, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I just felt so weak. Like, could I run a half marathon? Yes. Could I be considered good at running? Sure. But I hated it. Like, I was bored. Um, And again, like, I got down to like 118 pounds. And it's like, that's just not it. It's efficient (laughs) for running. But it doesn't really keep your body functioning healthily. Um, Right. At that time, I was also in a job that I didn't love. Um, and it's not necessarily that the job was bad. It was just, it didn't fit me. I was working for a large corporate company and, um, working in the sales department. And I was just like, I'm not really like one to worry about money. I'm like, I'll I'll spend money on what I need and make enough to pay for what I need. Like that's, that's all I really care about, um, with money and being in the sales department, it was constantly this like build revenue, build revenue, build revenue, you know, deal with this $2 million deal and you better not screw it up. And I'm like, well, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. I was just complaining, which is also a habit I've had to crack down on, um, complaining like to, I want to say my parents or something. And my mom was like, that's it. Stop. Like sit down, write down everything that you would rather be doing and then go find that and figure it out. And that was like, that was definitely like, turn the other direction. Cause I was like, oh, you're right. There is something I can do about this. Cause again, you fall into that victim mindset. You don't really realize, you know, I have a good job with a salary and benefits and everything. Like you kind of glaze over that and you're just like, oh, I hate this environment. Um, simply cause it doesn't fit you. And that's, that's poor reason to be nasty. But I sat down and I started writing down on a note card, everything that I enjoyed the most. And it kept coming up to sports, fitness, nutrition, 
strengthening, conditioning, like all of that stuff. And I was like, wonder what I could do with this kind of a career. And I just started mm. looking online and I signed up and handed in my two week notice. And one week after that, I moved into a house sight unseen in Liberty, Virginia, um, or Liberty, uh, Lynchburg, Virginia for Liberty University. Yeah. And I yeah. started my two years as um, training for strength conditioning coach. And like that was my first introduction to a barbell. <laughs> like, I was like, what <laughs> is this? Like, my back squat was 105. Like, I was like, oh, I can't do this, you know? I can't do this, you know? So, it was definitely, um, that was my introduction to weightlifting of any kind, because I had done yeah. working out at Planet Fitness, but that's A, it's all machines, and right. like, yeah, very few free weights of any kind. I did a bunch of dumbbell stuff, but like, I mean, a bunch by like curls, presses, flies. You know, like that is yeah. literally what I did through high school. So um, I just started getting really interested in, you know, weightlifting. And I think it was mm -hmm. the second year of my master's degree in 2017, close to 2018, I uh, decided to try out the local CrossFit box. And I walked in okay. and I was like, whoa, like this is the intensity I've been looking for. Because like, Running is so chill. Like, have you ever met cross country runners? Like, they're just like, how's it going, man? What's up? And I'm like, I'm not like that. I'm bouncing off the walls, you know? <laughs> I need something a little more intense. Yeah, yeah. And the coaches were just incredible. Like, they, um, I had had a knee injury from um, tennis and mm -hmm. it just kind of kept flaring up. And I remember, like, vividly, I came to the the box owner like two months into it I was really inconsistent with class because it just it was bothersome and I was like I don't know what to do for it mm -hmm. and I was like look like I love your gym this is incredible like I've never seen anything like this before but I'm gonna have to take a step back for a couple months until I can fix this and he was just like no like our coaches know how to modify for you like I'll speak to all of them and let them know how to help you when you're in their class and I was just like that just blew me away like that kind of customer service is just completely unheard of in any normal globo gym. Like that doesn't happen. Most of the time they're yeah. just like, oh, sorry, see ya. And from that time on, I was just like, like, this is awesome. Like I want to be part of a community that works with all of their members, regardless of their skill level, regardless of if they, you know, if they're strong, if they're weak, like everything and does it so well, you know, like a good coach, can pro or can scale a workout to any level like can figure out how to make it work for the class and that's what i continually kept seeing at um place where i go still go right now across at lynchburg mm -hmm. so that's what i started doing i had my first competition i think it was four months after i started cross oh nice yeah. <laughs> um and right away. i completely died like it was horrible <laughs> they started out with like a mile run like all over campus and it was like up and down and up and down like embankments and everything and I'm like coughing out my lungs because I'm like I haven't run this had been like a year since I'd done any half marathon training so I was like I'm in awful shape and then we get and it was like um heavy kettlebell snatches sumo deadlift high pulls and rowing and I was like I'm gonna throw up or pass out one of those and um but I just thoroughly enjoyed it like I love the feeling of like I may pass out I don't think I will, but I might. And it was like, it's that intensity um, that you just kind of like crave uh, after being a collegiate athlete. And it was just amazing. Like everybody was super competitive, super fun. And at the end of the day, it was like, didn't really matter who won, who didn't. Like we all hung out and talked and it was really neat. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, CrossFit competition is definitely, it's a different sporting event. That's for sure. <laughs> There's just no comparison to any other sport. Yeah, the shared suffering is uh, is something unique. So like you're not like yes, you are competing against everybody else, but at the same time, like you understand what everybody else is going through. So it's like you can't really be like an enemy of the of your competitor. You know? No. no. Well, like, the workout is happening. There, yes. <laughs> we're just there to put out your best, and they're there to do the same. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Um. So after your first competition, you just kept crossfitting or? Yes. So after grad school, I graduated. Um, I put out like 11 applications and got no callbacks mm -hmm. to anything. 
So Dang. I moved back to Pennsylvania and that was kind of like dejected, but I was like, I'm not going to stay in this space where I'm like, oh, why me? Like, I'm just, I just learned to like cut that off as soon as I feel that. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to backpack through Wyoming for 10 days. And that's what I did. Like, I literally was just like, Sweet. here we go. And um, that was, you know, incredible in its own right. And it was, oh my gosh, I could go on and on, but I won't. It was just amazing. Um, and I got back and I was going to get back into CrossFit. And then that's mm -hmm. when I got into a car wreck, um, which we've talked at length, uh, you know, details, but basically, um, you know, got T-boned car went like this all the way over here it was actually the amazing part amazing looking back now was uh, I got hit with such force that all the little caps for like the radiator and the oil and everything popped off off there like um, where they're supposed to be and like flew out into the field because they it just compressed the entire engine and it was just like <laughs> stuff went everywhere <laughs> so um, that was pretty crazy and uh, that definitely was a weird feeling because um, I'd, I'd never really been in that big of a car wreck before. I'd been in fender benders, but um, that definitely set me back because I had the concussion and I didn't really realize I had a concussion. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got taken to the hospital, they were like, you need this, you need that. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I don't know what, I do know what was wrong with me. My brain was a mess, but I was just like, no, I don't want any care. I don't want you guys, like, my mom had been hurt, so I was, like, super concerned, and I was just like, I need to be in her room. I need, like, I was, like, pulling wires off, and I was just, like, out of there, and they're like, well, did not check hardly anything on her. Probably should have sat down and let them check me. Um, <laughs> so I had that concussion, but I was like, I still want to do CrossFit. I didn't really realize how bad it was. Um, I think I started to realize it when I did a workout and my heart rate was 205. And that yeah. kind of like, it wasn't even like super intense. It was, I mean, it was wall balls and lunges, but like not anything real crazy. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, whoa, like this is a little abnormal, but oh, well, I guess I'll just take it slow. I didn't really take it slow. Um, I started working for a Globo gym as a personal trainer and then I got a second concussion um, and that was in November, and that was when I actually, like, stopped going to CrossFit classes, because I had continued to go all the way through, even though I felt, like, dizzy and yeah. nauseous, and I was just like, it's fine, it's fine. I don't know why I was so hard-headed, but I was, um, but then in November, when that happened, I ended up coming up to Virginia for a visit, and I saw my old chiropractor. He was mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna have to run a balance test on you. I was like, why? <laughs> he was like, something's not right. He, uh, he had me, you know, close your eyes, hands by the side, look left, look right, whatever. And um, I was just like, yeah, they like oh, support oh, me oh. from falling on the floor. Um, yeah. So I lost all proprioceptive balance. The only balance okay. I was able to elicit was eyesight. So um, at that point, I had to really pull back on CrossFit and I really didn't do honestly anything for a couple months. And then I called you guys and got yeah, signed up yeah. with you. And I was like, hey, I'm a basket case. I don't know if you can work with me, but, you know, <laughs> like, I didn't want to give up on it because I, I really saw myself competing. And it's right, hard right. to give up on a dream when you're like, oh, like, I just, I see this, you know, and I don't want to give up. But I wasn't mm -hmm. really sure how to train. And I was like, going to classes, they just, they didn't really get it. They were just like, oh, well, just use a lighter weight. And I'm like, on thrusters, like, I think I'm going to fall over. Like, right. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to fall over. Um, so I got like frustrated with that aspect. Um, and yeah, so then I just signed up with you and here we are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. It was a long process of just kind of like a lot of lighter work, just like working you back into training and like, um, you know, you were pretty good about knowing your body and, and what it could handle on a given day. Um, when we started, you were probably doing like two to three days a week of like, like that. <laughs> of, yeah, yeah. It was and, cool though. Like, I loved that you worked in protocols that I never would have thought of, like the breathing drills, like where mm. I would do breathing drills in between assault bike, like really slow on the assault bike, but then get off child's pose, breathe. And like, it was just incredible. Like, I, I didn't know that my body could recover like it had, like it has been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very, like, very light work. Definitely not, like, 
your prototypical CrossFit. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> CrossFit no. I wouldn't even call it CrossFit for a while. Yeah, no, it was just like, yeah, we were, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think the idea behind it was basically trying to get um, you into kind of like a meditative state because I had seen something or read something somewhere that like, uh, meditation improves um, gray matter, which is kind of like the areas that are, are affected by a concussion. So like, that was kind of like the idea behind it. And then that just evolved into kind of like slow assault biking and yoga poses and like, yeah. <laughs> easy, easy movement work. <laughs> yeah, It was amazing like that, you know, looking back on the recovery, it's actually pretty amazing um, how much my body has recovered. Mm -hmm. in you know, only a year and like eight months or whatever it is. So yeah. it's cool to see, like your body can recover if you give it time, yep. but also not just plain old rest. Like that's what the concussion specialist kept being like, you just need to rest. And I was like, no, <laughs> <It's gotta laughs> I can't. Be like, like, like there's no yeah. way I can rest like for two years. Okay. That'll rack up some medical bills. Like that doesn't work right. that way. So it was really neat to see that you can still move. You just have to mm -hmm. find a new way to move and, mm -hmm. and also accept the fact that it's going to take a while. And that mindset was really challenging. I'm sure you heard me complain a lot about what I wasn't <laughs> able to do. And I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it There's a lot of references back oh, to yeah. collegiate sport. <laughs> yes. yes. And that's, well, that's when I learned, like, I was like, I have to let go of who I was in order to mm -hmm. become who I am. And that's always a challenging thing to do. Like if you feel like you were really great at something in the past and you feel like you're not doing so great at something in the present, then you're like, oh, I wish I were back there. But you can never go back. You can always, only always go forward. And like yeah. that's something that you kept helping me reframe my mindset and helping me realize like, okay, you're going to get better, but it's just going to take time. And like yep. that, was, that was huge. Like that, yeah. your, your influence in that, I was like, coaches are amazing. <laughs> I've had a coach in college and now a coach now and I'm just like, it's, it's really incredible how much of, you know, what coaches say is not as necessarily concerned with the actual movement that you're doing, but the mindset, like the mindset is so critical. It can't be emphasized enough. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest separators between, um, you know, in our last podcast, we talked about levels, but like, that's kind of like the biggest difference between jumping levels or whatever your ability level is and moving up into kind of like that next tier almost is, is your mindset towards things. Um, and so that's kind of like where uh, that has taken a while for me to evolve. And like, it's helped working with you th doing that and like really having to focus on that for, you know, an extended period of time. But um, yeah, it's uh it's a, it's a tough thing to coach and it takes time to adapt to it. But over time, um, you, you get to see the changes in people and that's pretty cool. Sure. Of course. So, um, but yeah, so you, uh, like you're pretty much recovered. It seems from the concussion now, um, we haven't had any like symptoms or anything come up and you actually last year, we kind of tested it out with a camp in August and then, um, you just competed last weekend um how did how did that go was it fun getting out on the competition floor again oh my gosh that was like probably oh my gosh like i can't even explain it the cool part about it was like the let's see i competed in festivus actually like last year in september yes yeah yeah, yeah. yep and that was like mm, i had a good amount of symptoms still a lot of dizziness a mm -hmm. lot of, and it's not even dizziness, it's called disequilibrium. Like dizziness is when you feel like you're moving. Disequilibrium is when you feel like everything around you is moving. So like, yeah. I had a lot of feeling like everybody just needs to stand still for a minute, you know, <laughs> and that yeah. was really hard to fight through. Um, because after a while, you're just like, you just, you get to this point where you just want to lay down. Like you just, you just want to be done. <laughs> like, can the world yeah. stop moving? Like, I'm sure that's what drunk feels like. I've never been drunk and I don't plan to be because it's, ugh, no thanks. Um, <laughs> but like, it's just that feeling of like, you just want to stop everything and be done. And that's yeah. a very defeating feeling. Like, whereas this past weekend, oh my gosh, I got done with the fourth event and I was like, where's the fan? You know, it's just like, it was incredible. And before I even started, I had this sense of calm 
that I don't usually have when I compete. Because even in college, mm -hmm. I would get so nervous that half the time I would talk myself out of winning before I even started. Because I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I know my opponent, like she's trained since she was like 12. Like I've only played for two years. And then by the time you're halfway through the match, you're like, well, I lost it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I, it took me a while not to carry that onto the competition floor for CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And again, mindset, like I was just, it was incredible. Like I competed with a guy I'd never trained with. Yep. Um, <laughs> had to do that synchro workout at the beginning where I was like, this could either go really well or really tank. Yep. And but I really wasn't worried about it. I was like, I just trust that, you know, I've put in the work, he's yep. put in the work and we're go both going to see how we work together. And if we communicate, it's going to be fine. Yeah. So what, like we ended up getting, I think it was four rounds plus 10 toes to bar. Like it was 12 toes to bar, 10 deadlifts, 10 goblet squats. And it like, we just kept trucking along. Like I struggle mm -hmm. bust on the last set of uh, toes to bar, but like we just kept putting in work. And right. I never had a moment the entire day where I felt like, oh my gosh, butterflies. Like I'm so nervous because I knew like you had prepared me, you had programmed like, I just felt like, you know what, I've already put in the work and I won't be able to do more than what I'm capable of, but I'm going to be able to show what I'm capable of today and celebrate that hard work. Mm -hmm. And just having that mindset, just step on the floor and like every time the buzzer went off, I was like, let's go like 150%. Let's kill this. Like I want to, <laughs> I want to win, you know? And so like, even when I saw like the first event, we were in seventh place and I was mm -hmm. like, all right, like, I was like, this is how, what we're going to do. We're going to move up a place every single time or we're going to jump two every single time and we're going to get as high as possible and it was just kind of like that feeling of like i know we can you know i, yeah. I kind of eyed up the competition and i was like i know we can do this yeah, it was, yeah. Awesome. that was awesome yeah for sure for sure it sounds like um your focus has um and your ability to focus on certain things has definitely improved like awesome. sounds like in yeah. college you were focusing on some um you know external factors that you couldn't control like her amount of training versus your amount of training totally. uh and now it's like and a little bit more dynamic how you're gonna set something up or set up a shot or something like that where you kind of have to be reactive so it's yeah. a great uh great to hear that your focus is starting to develop a little bit even inside competition only having done a few inside of crossfit so that's sweet <laughs> yeah it was cool too like typically i'm very i'm too externally focused like mm -hmm. i'm like everything is like oh like even with concussion like everything was just so blaring like sometimes music would be overwhelming whatever during the competition i was like I would watch the videos that people had taken afterwards and I was like, oh, I didn't even know that whole song was playing. I love that song. But that's the cool part about it. Like you just, that is like when you know you're in the right place, like the right yep. mindset place, I mean, where you just yeah. kind of like, like all that matters is yep. just get those toes to bar, get those deadlifts, get those squats and do it again. And it's just, I just, it was incredible because it was really like, I don't even remember hearing the music. I don't even remember breathing hard. Like, and I know I did because afterwards I wanted to die. Um, but it was like that feeling of like, you don't stop. You just keep going. You just mm -hmm. keep punching down that goal. And it was mm -hmm. just completely, uh, I just like, I could do it again. Like, let's go. I just, it yeah. was so invigorating. Yeah. 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 The flow state um, is one of the coolest things in the world. Like, especially when you experience it for the first time, you're like, it's like you're like you were hyper focused before, but then when you enter into a flow state, like you, like you're concentrated on your task, but you're also able to kind of like expand what you're focused on and like take in important in bits of information and then narrow in what you're focused on and, and focus yeah. on, you know, one task at a time. Um, it's like, so it's like when you're swimming underwater, like you hear everything that's going on above the water, but it's such a different, like it's muffled all you hear really is just like, if you're in a snorkel, you can just hear your breathing, like that's it. And it's yeah. like that, that you can focus so much better with that muffled noise. And people don't realize like you can do that with your focus, attentional focus, you can, right. you can get that similar effect. And it's yep. amazing. Yep, yep. 
and do that, you become a much better competitor. <laughs> so, um, so what, um, what's next? Like, obviously, like we're trying to finish up COVID here. I've heard that there's going to be some, um, anti or, uh, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, vaccines. Yeah. <laughs> I heard there's, yeah. There's going to be some vaccines coming up here soon. Um, so obviously like competitions are few and far between, but, um, you have anything else on the horizon or. Um, I'm looking to... into a couple of them. Um, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Like, you know, like all my family is back in PA, so I would love to float back there for a competition, yeah. but, um, no, that's not happening. Like there is no such thing as a competition on the East coast pretty much. So like, and I, yeah. I realize Virginia is still kind of East coast, but I'm thinking like closer to the North, actual ocean. Um, North, Northeast yeah, coast. North, yeah, Northeast. But um, so I'll probably go further South. I know there are some yeah. in um, Jacksonville, Florida. And yep. like, I have a good friend that lives there. So I'm like, eh, that would work out, you know? Um, <laughs> Perfect. Well, that one is, they have open ocean swimming. So I was like, Ooh, never done that before but you know what it's the same feeling of like well it'd be fun it'd be an experience it would be something different um but yeah. i'm looking all over like yeah yeah might as well and that's the cool part about like being in virginia it's only a nine hour drive to jacksonville florida so mm -hmm. it's not terrible um when i went to tennessee like it was only five hours so, okay. you know, I can look at a couple of these states that actually have less restrictions on competing and kind of look for competitions in that area and just, yeah. so hopefully yeah. I'd like to find one in October. Um, I think yep. that would give myself time to work on the couple things that I noticed, like, hmm, I could have done better here, could have done better here. Like, you don't want to schedule mm -hmm. it so close that you're like, oh, I didn't have time to change that, you know? Um, right, right. But not so far out either that uh, you kind of lose that, that, you know, I don't know, it's a drive, like lose that drive because you're like, oh, I'm training for something. Like you have to have, yeah. I have to have goals. Otherwise, I'm just like, what am I doing? You know? Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, probably yeah. October would be great. You have to have things on the calendar I that do. you're like you know, working towards. Yep. And yeah, we chatted about that. Where it's like as soon as I find something, I sign up that day. I'm just like, I'm an immediate, I'm like, I don't like to, Oh, I'll sign up this weekend. Like, no, like sign up now. Get on the calendar <laughs> now and count down the days now. Like that's how yeah. I am. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, a very interesting time. Like, um, there's um I've started to see a lot more competitions pop up in kind of like that Georgia, um, Tennessee area. Um, even so there I mean there's even been a few in Florida and North Carolina yeah. here. But then yeah. like um yeah, it's like they're like starting to come come back, but like people are still kind of like hesitant about it. <laughs> but then like it's, it's like day two of the competition, people are like spectators are a lot, like all sorts of crazy stuff oh, happens. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> like, and I felt bad for like the people that were holding the competition in Tennessee, like they were cleaning everything after every single heat. Like, oh, yeah. Frantically, like around like disinfect, disinfect, disinfect. And I'm just like, I feel bad. Like that's so much extra work for them to do. But I mean, yeah. I have to say like, this was um, this CrossFit gym's first competition they've ever held. And I felt bad. So I'm like, you guys are holding it on the most inconvenient time possible. <laughs> yeah. They did a flawless job, like arranging everything. And like, I really felt like, wow, like, I felt like they'd done it before because they really made everything feel so seamless. So that yeah, cool. that's cool. That's cool. They must have, the person running it must have had like some experience like running well, competition. Yeah, she had competing. to have. Otherwise, like she was phenomenal. Like she was good at explaining the standards. Like they yeah. had sent out, they had recorded and sent out videos earlier. So like Sweet. if you show up and you don't know what you're doing, you're the problem. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. very organized. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Right on. Um, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on here. Um, been good, uh, good catching up and chatting here and hopefully this, uh, gives some people some resources, especially from the mental side of things. And, or if you've had a concussion, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, how do, uh, how do people get in contact with you? Um, easiest way is probably through Instagram and my handle is 
at Briar Like the Ice Cream, and it's spelled just like you would see on an ice cream carton. So B R E Y R. Contact info. Sorry, can you can you do that again, just in case it didn't catch that? Yep, yep, I can. Yeah. So easiest would probably be Instagram. So at Briar Like the Ice Cream. Yep, that's me. Yep, spelled exactly the same. <laughs> yep, exactly. Sweet, sweet. Um, well, cool. Thanks for coming on. Um, if you guys are listening to this on iTunes, make sure you head over to YouTube, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, you can also find us on iTunes um, or Spotify. If you guys are listening on Spotify as well, um, check out our Instagram blacklisted.hq. Um, give us a follow if you guys are found us on one of the other apps um, and we'll look forward to putting more out. Thanks for listening guys. We'll see you later. <laughs>